G'day, it's Tom here. Welcome back to Tommy Gun Machining. This is part four of the Quick Change Gearbox series. This will be different, it'll be a talking episode. I know, I know. You done? Now that we're three parts in, it'd be a good chance to discuss design intent. Because why would you begin with that? This will be a chance to update where we are and what we have left in the build. For those just joining us, this gearbox is for my lathe. It's designed to give me a lot more threading options without having to manually change out gears. There's nothing I hate more than that. You spend about 10 minutes changing gears, setting it all up, cut your thread, and you're gonna spend 10 minutes changing it all back. The other issue with this, some cowboy rigged all this up before I got this lathe. The gears wobble, and I actually have gears slip out of mesh. Some of you watching will say, fix your banjo, fix your gear studs. Eh. If I go through the effort of making this better, I might as well make a gearbox so it's just levers that I flick. Let's run through the model. Starting at the input, I've made an adapter onto an existing gear stud on the lathe. From here it's onto the multiplier assembly. I found this part had the most influence in the shape and the size in the gearbox. This assembly lets me step gear ratios in multiples of two, double, half, quarter, etc. From here, it's onto the transpose assembly. This allows for metric imperial thread selection. I've got a clever arrangement of several compound gears to get a very close approximation. That'll be in the next video. From here, there's another selector onto the screw gear stack. This is the final component of the gear train. And it's for fine adjustment and thread pitch selection. So it's come to my attention that some of the people watching this channel might not understand machining or what I'm trying to do with this gearbox. The gearbox goes on the back of the lathe and it synchronizes this spinny bit with this spinny bit. It turns this lead screw at a certain rate compared to the chuck and that in turn drives the carriage and lets me cut threads or just progress the tool and take a cut. If I flick this lever, the carriage starts to move on its own. Let's pretend this is my workpiece I want threaded. Pretending my hand is the tool on the lathe carriage. Now replace the pen with the tool that cuts in and you've got a thread. The gearbox is going to be plated in with covers and I'm going to have a support underneath it from the bench. This gearbox is going to be a significant cantilever on the back of the lathe. It might distort the ways and throw the headstock out of alignment with that huge weight behind it. You'll notice at the top here I've got this dished section bored out so that when I've got long rod stock sticking out the back of the headstock, it can actually pass through here. A lot of this build has been rushed over and nothing's really been explained to date. So in the first episode I made the side plates. This was horizontal milled out of a really scrappy piece of plate. I plan on cleaning out all the rust pitting that's still in here and filling it before I paint it for final assembly. I'm not going to rely fully on threaded rods to hold it together. For those who don't know, threads are really bad in bending. So I aim to actually weld in some members and make this a bit more solid. This just clamps onto the regular banjo connection. This is just held on on one side here with a not so beautiful TIG weld. Nothing too special. From there it's on to part two where we have the showpiece of the gearbox. The most compact part and the most interesting. So as I said before, this greatly controlled the size of the gearbox. This will generally sit on this gear, but I'll be able to select these two depending on whether I'm after a finer or a coarser feed. I'll shorten this up in the final build so these don't slide around so much. So from here, there's another selector. This allows me to select different output gears. And this feeds into the metric imperial conversion compound gears. That's next episode. I've fitted these out with bronze bushes now. My calculations were correct. I can move this. And from here there's another selector that picks up different gears on the output. I've tried a number of gear cutting methods now. 
started off with a hob. This design was from someone on YouTube. I can't remember now. I'll post a link if I can remember. And it works okay. So this is this is O1 tool steel. One of my first dividing projects and first attempt at gear cutting. You can see it got overheated and rolled over the edges. I was only able to heat treat in the first three and a half teeth. really slow and you've got to go really careful so you don't overheat it. A proper helical hob will be a lot better. Next up, my old beefy fly cutter slash whatever tool. This method was much faster than hobbing I found. I had cheap high speed steel that just got dull too quick. And lastly, these are just import from, well, I won't say the country. I'll leave it up to you to work out where it's from. These actually work really great. You can push them quite hard and take them to full depth of cut and it's not an issue. Even the import ones cost quite a bit, but they do seem to be quality. I made an arbor for this. Single point threaded. I will say, if you're going to use these, and I found this quite quickly, you do need a key. It's a damn short key. If you're going to make a gearbox, these are the way to go. And it shows in quality of gears as well. With the hobbed gears, the edges are rolled over on this and the tooth profile isn't so great either. Here's a better tooth profile, although it did end up being a bit wide at the root. But it ends up with a cleaner cut as well, and it's a lot faster method. And then actual gear cutters are amazing. No chatter or marks in here. I like to make up this gear holder a while back. It would actually go in the forward drawer normally so I can centre it. This was a great way to protect gears while I had to face them off and that sort of thing. Just tight fitting aluminium with a slight step in there. This is our input shaft that connects onto the gear stud of the gearbox. I think this was 716 14 Imperial. It's an aluminium shear pin that connects through here. I should have made it longer. So this is just to protect the gearbox and the lathe from feedback. I plan on putting another shear pin at the other end of the gear train on the output shaft. That way both the lathe and the gearbox are protected from feedback in both directions. That's the idea. Now, I'm not the first person to build a quick change gearbox. I found this long ago when I was starting to do a bit of research. My design's not really based on this one, but it confirmed a few ideas and gave me the confidence to go ahead with the build. As far as I know, I'm the first one to create a video series on it. This only has two gear selectors in it. Mine has three gear selectors plus a metric imperial selector, so there's really four. If anyone's interested in looking at this, it's I don't know, Mechanics Illustrated. No, this, this is on the internet somewhere. So I've gone with bronze pushes everywhere. The main reason for that is just the stock that I had on hand. I had a reasonable amount of this 30mm round bar that I found from a scrapyard, which was a fairly convenient size to push bearings into. These were originally going to have four oversized holes in here. So the thinking was that the body would actually have four M4 tapped holes, and this, these would sit with oversized holes so I could fine adjust and shuffle these to get the correct mesh. I experimented on this guy and just tacking these on was good enough. The bearings obviously warp as the world shrinks. If I tack this bearing here as the world shrinks, this will tweak over a little bit like this. The way I've been getting around that is then putting it in the vise, pull the bearing down and then tack the other side. That's been working really great to get these in correct alignment, bottom down, flat on the face. If we look back at our model, these are the parts that have been made and these are the parts that still need to be made. My target date to have this gearbox operational is mid-December. Hopefully I'll get the whole lot of videos out by the end of this year. That'll do us for this episode. Catch you later.